is 62 years old patient affected by low natal fibrillation relapsing uh, from 2003 despite therapy with uh, multiple antiarrhythmic drugs alone or in combination. Normal findings on transesophageal So this is the introducer that we are going to use to perform transeptal puncture. As you see, it's not a standard curve, it is an LA1. And we use this one because it's a straight curve and it will allow us to navigate the catheter into the left atrium more easily. So now we do transeptal puncture with a standard procedure. So we go to SBC. This is a rather stiff catheter, so we must allow some freedom of movement. Okay. The needle connected to a pressure line is inserted inside the sheath. The needle is pushed upward towards the superior vena cava until it reaches the tip of the sheath. Both are then dragged down very slowly into the right atrium until a jump is felt. At this point, the operator pushes the tip of the needle just outside the tip of the sheath and most importantly rotates it 45 degrees backwards to avoid aortic puncture. The needle and sheath are pushed up without hesitation. This puncture is followed by the recording of left atrial pressure. The sheath is pushed in the left atrium while the needle is retracted. This is the dedicated catheter, it's a 4 mm tip, non-irrigated catheter, and as you see it's a very flexible catheter. It has three magnets inside for navigation, one is here, the other one is here, and the other one is here, and this being a Navistar catheter, there is a magnetic sensor in the tip here. Now. We use this device to advance the catheter into the, to cross the valve. And we advance the catheter to the left atrium, just outside the introducer. Okay, now we will bring in the magnets. The remote navigation system uses a 3D geometry as it is integrated with the CARTO system. CARTO RMT unit is compatible with Stereotaxis magnetic environment. The interface and settings are different from the standard CARTO system. To allow greater mobility of the magnetic catheter, the sheath is pulled back. This is the cardio drive unit used to push and pull the magnetic catheter inside the atrial chamber. At this point it's necessary to perform a catheter position calibration. This is done initially by acquiring two fluoroscopic views in the right anterior and left anterior projections, separated by at least 45 degrees. The real-time catheter location information can be displayed on the Navigant reference X-ray images, enabling continuous real-time monitoring of the catheter tip position even without acquiring a fresh X-ray image. The stereotaxis navigation system needs to be perfectly aligned with the CARTO system in order to allow precise movement of the catheter. This is obtained by the setup of the catheter which marks with different colors the base and tip on both floor views and calculates its range of movement. We already performed the, the transceptor approach to place the mapping and ablation cut uh, in the left atrium. This procedure will be performed using uh, the stereotaxis technology that is able to navigate remotely in the art of the patient 
staying outside the operatory room. Catheter navigation is controlled by an interface through which the operator can manipulate the main vector of the magnetic field and advance or withdraw the catheter through the cardio drive system. The operator sits outside the operating room in front of a video workstation which includes a cartoon screen shown on the top right panel and two Navisphere images shown in the bottom right panel. A constant flora image is shown in the top left panel to show the exact position of the magnetic catheter for learning purposes only. It is in fact not continuously used during standard procedures. On the Carter screen you can see the reconstruction of the left superior pulmonary vein in red. The reconstruction of the pulmonary vein can be rapidly obtained by using the preset system for each pulmonary vein in 90% of the cases. This system has preset vectors memorized in the system that allow the catheter to be moved inside the pulmonary veins automatically. If necessary, the reconstruction can be performed remotely by the operator. This can rarely occur for the right pulmonary veins. The catheter now shifts to the right superior pulmonary vein, which is rapidly reconstructed. Points are being acquired in white. And the right superior pulmonary vein is now shown in blue. Next, the right inferior pulmonary vein is encannulated and reconstructed. Points are again being acquired in white. You can follow the image both on the Carter screen and on the fluoro. The right inferior pulmonary vein is shown in violet. On the bottom left panel you can see the image of the controller used to move the magnetic catheter. The controller has a joystick and buttons which allow the operator to perform both large and minimal movements as desired. The cardio drive unit shown on the left inferior panel is the mechanical actuator of the push and pull information. It is mechanically connected to the system through a cable visible on its right side. The operator can control and move the vector of the magnetic field through a mouse or keyboard controls. When major changes of the vector are required, they can be better performed by the use of the mouse. The vector is represented as an arrow on a 3D model on the left atrium, visible on the right, lower part of the screen. Note the green and yellow arrows on the Navisphere screen. The green arrow represents the desired direction and position that the catheter needs to reach, whereas the yellow arrow is the direction of the magnetic field generated by the two magnets next to the patient, towards the desired direction represented by the green arrow. As the yellow arrow is moving towards the green one, the magnetic field is constantly applied in order to allow the catheter to reach its final position in just a few seconds.